Welcome back. Thanks for watching. I lost this section of the video, so I'll just do a voiceover real quick. I've been wanting to add an oil cooler for some time now, as where I currently live it is routinely over 100 degrees for a good part of the year, as well as to keep temperatures of fluids in check is pretty important for a drag week or Rocky Mountain Race Week car. To begin with, I used a 0 to 300 temperature sensor from Low Dollar Motorsports. At this point, every sensor on my car is from low dollar with the exception of crank, cam, and fuel level sensors. Installation couldn't be easier, it's a two wire resistance based sensor and polarity doesn't matter. Just crimp the two terminals and slide into the connector. Then wire into sensor ground and input onto the Pro Dash. I'll be installing the sensor into the oil filter adapter for my Moroso oil pan which has a quarter NPT fitting and since the sensor is 1 8 NPT I'll be using a 1 8 to 1 quarter NPT adapter fitting a touch of Teflon tape on the threads and you're all done next we'll move on to the wiring the oil temperature sensor is a two wire sensor we're going to use IO5 which is if we look up here it is a custom CTS or coolant temperature sensor input as well as some other things and the reason I'm going to use five instead of four is I already have four for my transmission temperature sensor so like I said IO5 is pin 20 we're going to IO5 pin 20 second from the bottom third from the right if you got questions on that I have another video just on wiring in these inputs. So like I said, it's a two wire sensor. We're gonna run this one out and I'm gonna run that along the coolant temperature and pressure sensor, sorry, coolant and crank case pressure sensors. This will be the one end. The other end is gonna get tied into sensor ground, which we are going to steal off of those two sensors. The sensor's in, I'll show you that in a sec. But we're gonna go over the calibration real quick, just so that you don't have to go to that, the video I have just on that. We're gonna select menu, configuration, dash configuration. Remember, when we, when we set this up earlier, when we were wiring it, we're using IO5, custom CTS or coolant temperature sensor. Click on the little gear. Now, this is not linear. Temperature is, so zero at the very bottom, put 300 at the very top. You're from in the ohms, you're going to have to enter, uh, words are hard. You're going to have to enter all of these values. If you hit linearize X, linearize Y, it will not be accurate. However, if you input each of the resistance cells by itself, it will be. So once you've done all that, you should have a nice looking graph. Hit save, okay, okay. Now that we're here on the main screen, after we've set the calibration for that sensor, I want it right here, right underneath my left turn signal. So I'm going to click on there, click on add gauge. This would be a perfect time to have a mouse because this is annoying. Scroll down here. We're gonna go to IO5. In our case, we called it oil temperature. Hit on okay, and I want digital. Now it comes up, you can see that right there. Steering column's in the way, but it comes up tiny. We're going to come in here, Hit customize. Label is going to be CTS. We're going to change that to oil temp. Hit OK. Font size is fine. Next one, units is degrees F. Add that if it's not in there and click visible. Next one, range 0 to 300. Going to set the high warning at 220. No, oil temp. You know what? I like that the way it is. We'll drive on the car and we'll see how those look out. And we'll leave that as steady. We're not going to look at the low oil temp warnings scroll down a little bit more size we're going to set at 125 how's that look too big okay that looks good and then just going to move this a little bit right there now that we're all done Click on the background, and we are going to save our junk. Now, just like that, gooder than a goddamn, we're all done. And now I'm going to show you the rest of the install. Down here. Now, I chose to go this route because I have a Moroso pan and not a stock pan. If you have a stock pan, you can use the, the stock factory Corvette, and I think some of the trucks had it, little oil cooler thing. A lot of the LS engines had the block-off plate where it... it 
it didn't do anything. That's not an option on here. I only have a single one quarter NPT, what do you call it, fitting here. Don't have the option for a cooler out in return. So I got this sandwich adapter. This is that up in here in the sensor is that a quarter NPT to eighth NPT fitting adapter. Sandwich adapter. And then because I'm paranoid after losing the last motor, magnet on the filter. These are dash eight lines and they go forward to the front of the car. When I was running these lines, I noticed there was a hole right here. On a third gen, this is for what they call the wonder bar. Two bolts here, two on the other, or two holes here, two holes on the other side, threaded. And I decided to make use of this, so I used some P-clamps and a leftover body screw. Thread size on that is 10 millimeter by one and a half. The cooler itself. If you've seen some of my older videos, you may have seen the dual transmission coolers. I have this derail here, this line down here, goes from the transmission into this, the primary transmission cooler. It goes from the top here and goes down to this. Okay, maybe this is a little better. Down here, dash six into this regular tube and plate transmission cooler. Doug Cook was having a clearance sale motion. I got this for $40, so I threw it in there. Turbo 400 car, non lockup converter, and I pull a trailer at on drag and drive events, so I wanted to keep transmission temperatures as low as possible. So previously, the secondary cooler, remember they're plumbed in series, was mounted where this is. I undid these two one inch aluminum straps and moved it behind there and attached it again. And now this dual pass tube and plate cooler is mounted up here on the top of the core support and down below on, you can kind of see down here, Focus, there is another one and a an quarter inch aluminum strap that's fastened to this one inch aluminum strap. The bottom of the cooler is mounted to that. Also with eight old clamps, P clamps, whatever you're gonna call it, with these little tiny spacers to get it out away from the bottom of that cooler. So, like I said earlier, two dash eight lines coming from that way in front of the core support between there and the intercooler. 90 degree dash eight on this side and this side. So, fairly simple. That's it for this time. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all the things. Shirts, stickers are available.